Now what he's going to do, he's going to take his right knee, or his leg, he's going to sit over Mike's head, he's going to sit, and as he sits and leans into this direction, that chokes him, that hurts, okay? Right, I'm doing here. We're going to take a look at how to do the super choke, we like to call it the super choke, that's our name for it, it's really Jigoku Jime, which is hell strength. And, you know, often you'll see that one of the defining features of the hell strangle is anytime you do like a lapel choke, or even not a lapel choke, but you put your leg over his head or upper neck and and, and control and pressure to it. So that's often a lot of people being put to think that's kind of a hell, hell strangle. I don't think there's any official designation of that, but that's a good way to describe it. I've always used it for many, many years. So we're going to look at this, but we call it the super choke because many years ago, many years ago Kenny Brighton just named it the super choke because it's really super choke. Let's take a look at it. Now, here's the situation. If Mike is flat, a lot of people will go flat. That tells you a lot about what his skills are in the Nawaza. Now, he might be doing that just momentarily to wait for there to maybe get a base or something. He might be. But he might also not know very much about ground fighting. Okay? So he'll go flat, thinks that's safe, and cover up. A lot of times a guy will do that, wait for the referee to call a break in the action. Whether it's judo, sports jiu-jitsu, sambo, whatever it may be, sometimes they'll just wait there and they'll think that's a safe place to hide, and that's no place to hide. So we'll, we'll make him pay for, for doing this our own way. Yeah, there we go. So when a guy is flat like this, okay, what Derek will want to do, let me just get on my lapel choke just through the end. He'll start, he'll do the lapel, he'll loop it under, and when he comes to the side here, now, the key thing he's going to think about first is this. He wants to get his, he's choking with his right hand around the lapel. He wants to get his left knee just about at Mike's, right about at Mike's hip. Right, right at the waist area. Does everybody see that? Can, can you guys see that? That's a good base there. That's a good anchor, as it were. Okay. Now, he's also grabbing the, the belt. He's going to lift with that belt. We're going to show you how you can lift with the pants as well if he's got judo pants on. We're going to see that in a second. But he's starting, to, he's starting to set up the choke here, the strangle itself. All right, so he's got a pretty good lapel thing going here. He's wrapped it under the neck. He's got handles here and here. Now, what he's going to do, he's going to take his right knee, or his leg, he's going to sit over Mike's head. He's going to sit. And as he sits and leans into this direction, that chokes him. That hurts, okay? And you notice when, yeah, I cough, okay. When Derek did this, when Derek did this, as he leaned in, as he crossed his leg over Mike's head, that inside of his knee was just behind Mike's head, and he leaned forward into this direction. Watch him do it again. I won't blab as much. Now, did you see something important what Derek did that you have to do as well when you do the strangle? That left hand pulled up a bit, and that helped elevate him and get him going in the direction he wanted to. So, and it works. It really does work. And you can also jam your knee further in. Exactly right. It gets you, with, by jamming your knee in deeper under him, it just, you know, blocks him. He can't go anywhere, okay? So you're adding more pressure to the strangle itself. So watch him when he does it again. He, he, and he starts basically loops under and around the, the throat there. See how he grabs? There it is. So that's a really, really tight strangle. That's just a super choke from that flat, flat, flat direction. Okay. Now, a, a variation, you can do one or two ways. We're going to grab the pants. Instead of grabbing the belt when he comes and he does all this, he can grab either side. It's your preference. If you grab the far side, and as you stick it, so if he's grabbing his left hand, see on that Mike's far left leg there, just, and you can see where he's grabbing, just kind of above the knee. You don't want to grab below the knee because you'll bend the knee. So grab up here. And now you can lift up as he, now watch what he, what he does. See how he lifts his whole body up as he does that? torques him in that. Some guys like to do that. Or you may grab the near leg. Some guys prefer that. It's, it's a personal preference, really. But it's either one of those fine, but I think the go-to move is the way we teach you basically the belt. The belt's your best handle to lift with. So that's what you're looking for with these, this stuff's going on here. You want to lift them up with something. By lifting them up at the waist, it works a little better, and I'm showing you these other two variations just in case those don't work well enough for you. If you try that, it doesn't work, then you can grab the pants and cut.
come back and do it. So say you tried to do the lift. So, okay, so he comes up and he tries it, and for some reason Mike just doesn't lift up. You know, you know try, 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 try to lift the belt first. Mike, he's just, maybe he's a stud. Okay, good. Now grab the leg, and I'll do it with his leg. Okay, so it'd be a good backup move if you want to do it, right? Did you see how we did that? Now the looping under the hand, the, the neck, is just make sure you get under the neck and you loop. This is a rope. Let's think of this lapel as a rope. You know, when Kano designed the judo gi, he did that on purpose because he liked lapel strangles. So it's a nice wide rope to use and just loop it. And notice he doesn't have any space in between his face and the mat. Most guys won't. They'll press their head down on the mat because they're trying to avoid letting you go through the choke. So if you're being nice about this and you loop down, you're like, oh, his chin is down. I can't do a choke. That's what they want you to think. So you don't, you're not going to like cross face the guy, but you're just going to drag your, your elbow through and lift. And it'll go through. It's a little uncomfortable, but it's not bad. It's not as bad as yeah. a cross face. That's right. That's so right. Don't let the fact that his face is down stop you from trying to continue the choke. Okay, you might even have to, if you're really that worried about it, kind of lift up a little bit, boom, and then come under. Okay, and then it's set, catch, step over, and there you go. Left knee. Now this is important. The left knee is one you don't want to neglect, guys. When he comes around, and look how that left knee jams right in there. Now when, when he does lift the bike up, he's going to jam that in tighter. See, and that makes more body contact and makes it a whole lot tighter. Make sense? It's a great move. And you, you know this is a variation when they're on elbows and knees. You do an elbows and knees. If you do an elbows and knees, man, it's even better because you've got a lot of room to do it. And I should have had Mike do it on you because he likes the strangle a lot, you know. But it's a, it's a great move. We call it the super choke. It's really just a variation of Jigoku Jume, the hell strangle. So let's work on them when they're flat. When they're, when they're, and I say get, get good at one side, but get good at the other as well because most of it, it, you, you should be pretty ambidextrous in your ground fighting skills. You know, because you never know what part of the mat you're on, what the situation is. You should probably get good at it. Get good at one side and we'll come to the other. We good? Let's go get it.